Praxis, and today is one of those days where I'm doing a bunch of odd jobs inside because it's raining outside, so I'm doing all my rainy day jobs. One of them is working on this handrail. Now, I already got one of the handrails debarked. It's out in the greenhouse drying, and the greenhouse is a really ideal place for it to dry because it's not super hot and it's not super dry in there right now, and that might sound like, well, that sounds like a terrible place to dry anything. Why don't you put it right next to the wood stove? Well, the reason is, is you want these things to dry slowly because you don't want the outside surface to get too dry when the inside still has the moisture. You want uh, it to happen slowly so that the, they're kind of uh, in sync with each other. If you dry the outside too fast, as things dry, they're gonna be shrinking. You know, you see like mud, uh, you know, outside, how it like cracks on the surface because the, the top surface dries and shrinks and you know, the bottom is still wet. So I don't wanna have any cracking happening in these. So I'm drying them slowly out in the greenhouse. I um, kind of mentioned that I was doing the other one the other day, but I didn't really show you. So I figured I'd kind of show you how I'm doing it. I'm using this Kukri or Kukuri uh, machete. It's a Nepalese style machete that has this kind of curved surface here. It's made by K-Bar. I really like this machete. It's a really strong uh, tool. Uh, and um, you know, it, it, it's, it's held up really well over time. The curved section works out really well to just kind of hold on to it and pull it along to pull the bark off. Now the, uh, the tree here has had some time to dry, uh, but you know there's still green in here and um, there's still some moisture in here. And that's good, it actually helps to get the bark off easier if there's still some moisture left in here. If it was totally bone dry, this wouldn't be peeling off nearly as easy. So this is a, a kind of a good stage to be doing this at. Uh, I'm just going along it like this. It, uh, the uh, handrails need to be between an inch and a half and two inches by code. Uh, and the end is just a tiny bit over an inch and a half and it's probably over two inches at the other end there. So as I go down while well, here, I'm just pretty much just trying to get the bark off. When I get down to the other end, I'll be going into the wood a little bit to try to get it a little bit more narrow. Uh, after this, I'm gonna go through with the rasp and the rasp will just kind of smooth out all these little knots in different, uh, different areas. Other things that are going on today, radon is looking good. Uh, today's the second day of reading, so the numbers are starting to get a little bit more credible. And uh, we're bouncing right around between just below and just above two. If you recall, 2.7 is what's considered by the WHO to be kind of like a safe level. Now I know some people will be like, oh, don't listen to the WHO, but less is better than more. And I'm glad that we're down from six to eight, which was sort of where we were before. Uh, and I bet we're going to see that uh, number come down even more over time as the house continues to kind of clear out. Uh, and also when we start running air exchangers and all that sort of stuff. Uh, also, um, uh, in the not so great news category, uh, there's a leak in the pantry area uh, coming out uh, around the three inch conduit. It's an ABS conduit that runs from this house into the root cellar. I can run power through there, uh, you know, to run, you know, lights or a dehumidifier, which I am running over there right now. Uh, also, if it was ever used as a fallout shelter, uh, you could put a water line through there so you could get uh, drinking water, uh, you know, over there. Um, it's leaking, not from within the, the conduit. The inside is dry. It's leaking around it, uh, you know, with the seal from the foundation, which is uh, kind of surprising because it's been there for a long time. We've had plenty of rain. It's raining today. Why is it leaking now? Well, I think it's because uh, I just put in those uh, grounding spikes. Remember the eight foot long grounding spikes that I just pushed down into the ground. They went pretty easy all the way through. They were going through some cavities in there. And I think what I did is when I pushed one through, I made kind of like a highway for the water to kind of spill in and it's filling in one of those cavities and it's you know, working its way around to that, uh, that area. I'm not that worried about it. Uh, what I did is I just took some silty uh, dirt and some sawdust that I had outside, kind of put it in the area, and I'm hoping the water will kind of wash the silt and the sawdust fibers down. It'll kind of plug itself up and kind of, uh, you know, solve, solve itself. I'm not, I'm not thinking we're gonna, once we get into winter, I'm not thinking we're gonna have, you know, a bunch of issues with that. But come spring, if it continues to be a problem, it's not a big problem. I'll just excavate down, you know, make sure that the whole thing's totally sealed and then, uh, you know, be done with it that way. So that's what I'm doing today, finishing this up. I'm gonna try to get the last lights on. They're the ones that are outside in the greenhouses. See if I can put those up today. Uh, no, other than that, just doing all the indoor projects I've saved, and then tomorrow it's gonna be bright and sunny and cold, but I'll be outside doing more wall boards. That's it, thanks for watching.